Last year, the Klamath effort was the largest campaign ever run by the fishing industry in grassroots advocacy campaign. I know of nothing that measures up to the Klamath. 9,000 letters and, and 30,000 petitions. Largest campaign ever run. We think we've got the model now. If we can build on that, spread it, we can make fishermen advocates everywhere in this country. What Coastside did, we launched a full I guess full frontal attack, but Coastside has 13,000 members. So I have quite an army of letter writers, and it's an internet organization so that I can reach them at the drop of a hat. So we launched, and within about two weeks, we had generated over 8,000 letters to all the politicians. There were two legs of that campaign. Coastside and the folks out here rallied the fishermen, rallied the troops to go on. We set up the ASA website. We have a very elaborate website. We had about a dozen options where a fisherman could call up the site, here's the letter, click where you want it to go, click, 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 options, click, go, sent. That was the other leg of the campaign to get the fishery back for the Klamath. The, the key is to be in contact with your constituency, the people that care about the industry, that care about the fishing. Without the internet, you, you can't do that. Uh, you know, we have, we have access. I can send out 13,000 qualified emails uh, in about five minutes' time to fishermen to call them to action. Anglers have a, a way of just sort of sitting back and watching things go by. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you that's got to end. When people can't get to the water or they're told that they can't fish for a certain species, their favorite species, because of an access problem, that really hits home. That's beginning to get anglers' attention now. So you couple that with the habitat problems and you sort of bring people along as they begin to understand the bigger picture. People are motivated by fear. So if they fear that they're going to lose fishing, then they begin to act. we got to pull together. We have to speak with one voice. We've got to all pull from the rope from the, at the same time, from the same direction. You know, if it requires a board of, of a member of each individual club, but, uh, that's what you're going to have to do. And, and it's not an easy job. You know, you've got to, it's going to take leadership. It's, you've got to find people that, uh, that people respect and, and, uh, and you know, it's, they won't, they, they say what they mean and they mean what they say. And, you know, people can count on that.